showing you how to identify and make tincture from peppermint. So the botanical name is mentha paprika. Some of the ailments that mentha paprika is good for is the respiratory system, so colds, coughs, bronchitis, sinusitis, flus. It's a great antiviral. Also great for the nervous system, so for stress, anxiety, um, nervousness, mental fatigue. It's also great for the digestive system, so any kind of gas, bloating, indigestion, heartburn. Um, just take caution if you are pregnant or on any kind of mood-altering sedative drugs. So today we're going to be showing you how to harvest, and sorry, identify uh, the plant. So if you can go down from here, um, first of all, the main characteristics of all um, mint, the mint family plants, are its square stem. If you can see that. Another great characteristic of mint, of course, is um, the smell. So you can just break off a leaf, um, you know, squish the leaf up, and then of course just smell it. And if it smells, uh, has a strong smell of menthol, then you know it's a good indication that it's peppermint. Um, so you're going to want to harvest around here, so three quarters of the way. So you're just going to grab some scissors, and you're just going to snip three quarters of the way up. Um, another good characteristic, of course, of mint is the cone-shaped flowers, purplish, violet, in clusters going up into a spike. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're not going to want to use any of the dead leaves or if any leaves don't look nice, you can just pick them off and you're going to want to pick off all of the leaves and leave the stem prior to chopping. Um, so that is basically how you identify mint. And when you are harvesting mint, you don't want to take the whole plant. You always want to leave some behind so that it grows for the next year because uh, mint is a perennial. Okay, so stay tuned and we'll go into uh, the kitchen and show you how to make a tincture. Thank you. Hello everybody, welcome back. So we're about to now process um, the mint and uh, make a tincture. Um, so you do need a few things. Uh, first of all, you're going to need a scale. Um, you know, any kind of a scale that's going to measure in grams um, will be fine. Um, you're going to need menstruum. So I like to um, pre-do my menstruum. So I do 60% alcohol. You're going to want to do um, uh, overproof alcohol. I use ethanol, 90%. Now that's going to be a bit difficult to um, get unless you're a practitioner, but you can also use a vodka, overproof vodka, brandy or whiskey. They all work fine. Um, and then I like to use um, food grade vegetable glycerin. So I do a combination of 60% water, 30% uh, alcohol and 10% glycerin. And that's what's going to be in this jar here. Um, I also have already a menstruum ratio chart. So if you guys do um, need one or would like one, just uh, send me a quick email and I will be happy to send it out for you. So that's gonna show you how much um, herbs you need for what size jar. So I'm gonna do uh, 300 milliliters. Um, so we're gonna do fresh one to seven which here it all states here, one to seven fresh is going to be about 40 grams. Now I've already um, measured this out. I've already pre-pinched all of the leaves off and I've left the stem and I throw the stem away. I don't chop and use the stem, but I do just use the leaves. So it's all ready to go here. Um, you're also going to need some kind of a knife. I love this um, Mezzaluna because it works fantastic, but you can also use just any kind of a knife. That's fine. So then we're going to just go ahead and uh, go back and forth and chop the herbs up. And you're going to want to chop it up nice and fine. So you're going to keep chopping and I like to move around the herbs while I'm chopping. And so you're gonna get it nice and fine. And I like to go side to side. And continue to chop it up until it's nice and fine. 
So again, uh, what you're going to need is alcohol, good pure water. Um, again, you don't need the vegetable glycerin. I like the vegetable glycerin. It makes the menstruum taste nice. It also actually helps deliver the herbs with the alcohol to the bloodstream. So um, that's what I was taught how to do it. And so I keep it that way, but you don't need the vegetable glycerin. You just need um, really just alcohol. And so we're gonna continue to chop it up nice and fine. And so if you can see, a little bit more would be nice, but um, yeah, so we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> I mean, the finer the better, right? Because the plant constituents are going to get delivered with the alcohol that much better. Okay, so then you're just gonna get a jar. Um, fortunately, I don't have any more amber jars. I love using the amber jars because uh, they help block any kind of light. And you're always gonna wanna keep this um, away from light in a cool, dry place. But for the first two weeks, you're gonna to want to shake this every morning, every night, so twice a day, you're gonna shake it um, and then you can store it. So then give the menstruum a little bit of a shake and then you're gonna add the menstruum right here into the jar all the way up until it's full. And drink the lid on and voila. Again, you're gonna shake this vigorously twice a day for two weeks and then you can store it. Um, you're gonna let this sit for about two months, at least two months. If you have to use it because you're in a jam, you can use it over after a month, but I like to keep mine for at least two months, you know, up to a couple of years. Uh, the alcohol preserves it. You're going to put a label on, always put the name, I like to add the Latin name, and then the date. Always add the date so that you know when you've made it. And so that's it, that's our tincture, voila, uh, mentha, paprita in tincture medicine. So any questions, just send it in the link below and I'll be happy to answer any questions and I'll be happy to send you the chart so that you have it. It goes from dry to fresh, uh, from one to 10 all the way to one to four. Okay, thanks guys. Have a happy and healthy day.